So we'll begin by focusing on the way we access items in a list or a dictionary. I think you know how to do this. For example, if I asked you to print the value of C or the value of apple, you should be able to do it. It's easy enough. In fact, because I know it's the last item in the list, I could just use the negative subscript and that would be uh, lovely for us. We could get apple that way. But, uh, and so, I mean, we understand how to do that. Of course, I can also say to um, and access uh, that item. I could also work with this other list if I wish. And so it's quite easy to access items. What we're going to focus on in reading multidimensional structures is to learn how to read these structures and how to access data out of them. You see, we we're next week we're going to talk about building these things. But when you know, in the in the any time in the future, you may be presented with a JSON file, and they'll say, "Take this JSON file and pull this data out of it." And that's what I'll be asking you to do too. You need to know how to negotiate uh, the JSON file, be able to negotiate the multidimensional structure. Um, and by the way, the JSON file is structured in a way that makes it look a lot like Python. And in fact, when you read the JSON file into a Python object, it will be Python and it will be lists and dictionaries, etc. So working with these structures right now will help us understand how to work with JSON because it'll be exactly, uh, it'll be perfectly analog analogous. So now when we talk about accessing an item, it's all very well and good. Now, what if I were to place an object inside another object that was instead of a string or an int, instead a list. Looking very closely at this, you can see that while x contains an int, a float, and a string, and these are all objects, of course, y contains a string object, another string object, and then a list object. So we're just putting objects into containers just as we always have, or we have since the week before last. You know, you can put an integer, a float, or a string into a container and then access it using an index, right? So we access items in a, can items in a container using a subscript. Right? Whether it's a list or a dictionary, we access the item in a container using a subscript. We can also use looping as well. But we're going to look at this now uh, using a subscript. So let's say that I wanted to look at the last item in Y. What is that item? What are we going to see when we print this? Well, what we see is the list in X. Because Y simply contains three objects. The first object is a string, the second object is another string, and the third object is a list object. So it's not really any different than any other list that we've seen. The only thing that makes it a little bit different or makes it actually sort of potentially complicated, even though it isn't, is that we have yet another container in here. Now this is you know analogous to what I showed you before. If we have... Um, student data that has you know regular fields that we might want to use let's say this one <clears throat> and the last item in that list is another list we have to know how to get that info out so let's take another look here how are we going to get let's say the values in x out we might want to loop through x um, we might want to get the first or the last item in X. Why don't we get the last item in X? And actually, I'll just go back to using a regular subscript here so we can kind of count it out. All right, so let's just say this. Let's say that we didn't have access to X. We didn't have access to the X uh, list. And in fact, that would be the truth if we if we had placed the list within another list. In other words, if the list actually didn't have a variable name. So let's just do it that way. I want to print the name Apple through Y. How do I do it? Well, it's pretty straightforward because Y subscript 2 is getting me what? I'm going to change this slightly so I know I'm not running an old program. So 
why subscript two is getting me a what? A list, right? So why subscript two is pointing right at the list? Now, at this point, we actually have two entities or two references to uh, this list that says one, 2.3 and Apple. Uh, I've got two lists now. Um, but if you know, if you consider these two lists to be more or less the same, there are two ways that I can refer to this list. Um, on the one hand, I have X, right? So X is one way. If I print X, I'm going to see that list. And if I print Y subscript two, I'm going to see that list. They happen to be different lists at this point, but that's not really the point. The point is there are two ways to access this particular list through the name X and through the item, the third item in Y. That's how we're accessing this list in either case. Now that's really, I think, an important point and an important step towards your understanding of this. If I want to access the list, I have two options. I can access it through a name or I can access it through an item in a container. So X points to the list and so does Y subscript two. So here's my question. Given either one of these lists, how am I going to print apples? Well, through X, you know how to do it. We're just going to do subscript two. That'll give us uh, the third item in X. But, well, actually, you know what? Forget apples. Let's do 2.3 because I want to draw a distinction. X subscript one gets me 2.3, right? X subscript one is going to get me 2.3. All right, so now the question becomes, if Y subscript two also points to such a list, how could I get 2.3 out of that list? In other words, how could I get 2.3 from Y? The answer is we first access the list, which is what we're doing here. Y subscript two, that's the list. And then we do another subscript, subscript one. Now notice that we're using subscript one in both cases. Why? Because it's the same item in a list. So on the one hand, we have X subscript one, which is perfectly understandable. It's the second item in X. On the other hand, though, <clears throat> on line 11, we have the second item in the list that's inside Y. The second item in the list that's the third item in Y. It's not really that complicated. Just think Y subscript two points to a list the same way that X does. So X, Y subscript two points to a list and now we can do whatever we want with it. We can subscript it. We could append to it and we could also loop through it. How would we loop through X? For item in X, print item. Okay, well given that, uh, and this could be a challenge for you, so you might wanna pause the video. How could you loop through the list in Y? That is not A and B, but one, 2.3 and apples because we've got it uh, with X, right? If we run this, we should see uh, the three items in X. 2.3, uh, oh, I'm just printing something else too. So let's take those out. 2.3 or one, 2.3 and apples. Okay, so now, how could we loop through the same list that's in Y? One, 2.3 and apples. Go ahead and pause the video, see if you can figure it out. Okay, ready? We need to loop through the list in Y. That is the inner list. I call it the inner list because it's inside the other container. How can we do it? Well, first we have to access it. How do you access that inner list? It's Y subscript two, right? So, for item in Y subscript two, print item. So we should see the same list printed twice since we have the same values in those two lists. And there it is. So look closely at line 12. Anytime you look at anything, you wanna ask what's in that thing, obviously. So let's actually, let's start on line 10. When you say for item in X, if you're reading this code for the first time, you wanna ask, well, what is X? I mean, what is X? 
X is a list, right? You look up and you see X is a list. Okay, so I see. So I'm uh, on lines 10 and 11, I'm looping through and printing each item in that list. Fine. But now if we look at line 12, you want to ask the same question. For item in what? What is Y subscript 2? Well, Y subscript 2 is a list, right? If Y subscript 2 is a list, I should be able to loop through that list. I should be able to append to that list. I can do whatever I want with that list. I can get the len of that list. Y subscript 2 is the list. So we can say for item in Y subscript 2. And you want to keep this in mind because we're going to look at more complex data, data that's nested even further than just one dimension. And we're going to want to be able to work with this using the same principle. And the principle is this. Here's the principle. You ready for the principle? To access an inner container um, and work with it, we first find the address of that uh, container in the outer container. That is the key to understanding the reading of multidimensional structures. And I hope you'll hold that in mind as we go through uh, the remaining topics within this, uh, within this uh, topic.